You're listening to the Colts Blue Zone Podcast with Mike Chappell and Dave Griffiths. Inside the Fox 59 CBS4 Podcast Studio, welcome to the Colts Blue Zone Podcast. Alongside Mike Chappell and Matt Adams, I'm Dave Griffiths. We appreciate you listening. There will be no talk of the officiating in Madison Square Garden in games one and two. Was it bad? Well, that's that's what uh, apparently that's what they seventy-eight say. plays were bad. Oh, that's what the Pacers say exactly. <laughs> but but that that's the talk of the town we, here. We, that... we were talking. We won't go down the rabbit hole. But, no, but but two already thing, two well, things shows two, off the rails. Two things can be true. First, the officiating has been bad. Uh huh. I think it cost them game one. Mm-hmm. It cost them a chance. Game two, it had very little to do with it. It was just they were there were some egregious calls. Mm-hmm. But when you play as bad as the Pacers did in the third quarter, yep. You lose all. Like you lose all. Exactly. Ground. It doesn't matter. It doesn't help. So anyway, that's off our chests. Is that all we're back. done? Exactly. That's it. We can get. We can get back. Uh, back to the Indianapolis Colts as uh, they are at West Fifty Sixth Street. And they're this the week, right now. They're the least relevant. They are pro franchise because crazy. they get the fever going. The Absolutely Pacers crazy. And the Indianapolis Indians. Paul Skeens just getting called yeah, up. Called that. Indian going to, to, the club. to the Pirates. Yeah, he, exactly. He's a real deal, isn't he? Yeah, the, he, he's he, incredible. He's, he is yeah. incredible. So like, they, I've I've seen comparisons to. The, the two pitchers that I've seen comparisons to are Steven Strasburg and Mark Pryor. So that's why they're being they're trying to be careful with them. Like, he could have started with the majors day one well, this year. Well, Strasburg had uh, he, had he had injuries, and so did Mark almost Pryor. Almost from the start. Both, both of them, yeah. You're right. So so the, the Pirates are, are, are oh, trying man, their so best gonna to get a couple more years. So we're going to be on pitch counts. Yeah, he will be. I saw I saw a, a, a clip of well, – here we go to another rabbit hole. We're still off hole. the rails. Yeah, I tried uh, to get us uh, back uh, on. B- but back nope. when it was Juan Marichal and Warren Spahn, was it? And it was a one to nothing game in twelve. Each one threw a, a complete game, and they threw like two hundred and fifty pitches each. And when I see guys now at a hundred pitches, then yeah. start, they get the hook. Crazy. Yep. Bob, I, I like to see somebody tell Bob Gibson he was nearing a yeah. hundred no, pitches. Uh, yeah, right. And oh, we we pull you now, Bob. You get a <laughs> death stare. And, and by the way, anyone who's ever heard of Warren Spahn doesn't know what a podcast is. So you're you're well past our comfort zone here. No, Wilbur Wilbur Wood started both games of a doubleheader. Of course, he was a knuckleballer, but oh, of course, whatever. Yes. All right, now. Back to are, you. Are we, are we out of the rabbit so hole? I, I will say Skeens only had one game uh, for the Indians, which he pitched more than four innings. That's or true. More than five innings. I mean, he had yes. a six inning. Mm-hmm. His second to last start for them was a six inning yeah. quality start. Everything else was like three innings, yeah. four yeah. innings you, max. Four, four so and a third. Cool, three it's so cool when those thirds. major leaguers yeah. to be mm-hmm. – Go through here. Yeah. And it's it's really cool. And you knew for the from the second that Skeens was here, or from the second he was drafted. I mean, for crying out loud, yeah, you were hoping that he would get here. Like you're hoping they wouldn't just jump him from Double A to to the to the majors. And and lucky us, we got seven starts out of him this year. So that was fun. But the Indianapolis Colts hoping to to have uh, some fun at rookie minicamp this weekend. So all, all these guys, uh, you don't have to be signed to to be out there. I know we we've talked about that. And that's been they'll sign um, waivers exactly that you sign a waiver to say hey if you blow out your knee I and mean, hopefully it doesn't happen. Happen, obviously, but if you, if you get injured, then then you still get your well, who your was it last year? Uh, but the, the thing Daniel is, Daniel Scott. Yes, Daniel Scott, and it was in rookie. It was, oh, it was, it was either rookie or, or OTA. It was it was very early in OTAs. Right. If it was OTAs, but yeah, the safety Daniel Scott out of was he out of Missouri? I thought it was um, Cal. Was it, it was Cal. You're right. It was Cal. Um, so I, it was the same color scheme in, in yeah, my head. I was trying to think, yeah. what, what college is that? And, and Missouri came to mind. But, um, but yeah, so he was. Because Anthony Richardson participated. And in, Daniel uh, Scott was actually one of their biggest Raz scores from last mm-hmm. year. They were very excited to have him. And, and, and they, they mentioned him in the offseason. When yes, we talk have. about safeties, he said, mm-hmm. oh, it's his. Oh, we got Daniel expect. Scott, too. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what Daniel Scott can do. Very, very exciting to see. Um, but, but it's three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's meet, rookie meeting camp, Go right? Ahead. And meet, we get two days, Friday, Saturday. Who we'll talk to guys tomorrow. We, we'll we'll talk to Latu and probably Mitchell. See if Mitchell's calmed down. Is he still and, pissed off? I that's know. the I, first question. If he gets the stand, are you, you still pissed? Well, you know, if it goes down there, dog on it. And and what's like, you know, they traded back six spots. We keep saying, you know, they loved they, him so much. They wanted they you so much. They him. traded back, and this wasn't JT where they get, went up three spots at right. about the same spot in the draft. Mm-hmm. So, but and then and then Saturday we get them, and then they they have uh, workouts on Sunday, and we I think the league is you're only mandated that you get one day of access. The Colts give us two because the Colts are they're they're very good PR people. They really are. They, they work with it very well. So this is the next step where it, it sort of allows rookies to come in and it, it's it's like your freshman orientation in college, mm-hmm. to where you see where the buildings are, you see where the meeting rooms are, and all. so it's important time and they, and it allows them to kind of get their feet on the ground before all the Quentin Nelsons and 
all, all, all the veterans guys come in and you sort of take over the show. Mm-hmm. So it'll uh, it'll be a uh, a time to get to work, time to to learn where where the cafeteria is, you know, and and, and all that stuff in the in the periphery. And um, so uh, looking forward to, to seeing what they have to say now that they're here, now that they have a, a horseshoe on their helmet. Um, one bit of news uh, that we'll uh, kind of kick off with today after that brief introduction is that uh, Quiddy Pay is going to be an Indianapolis Colt next year. You can guarantee that. Unless they trade him, of course. But the Colts picked up his uh, his fifth year option from uh, the 2021 first round draftees, which is an option for the teams for guys picked that year in that round this off season. So that was two hours after we recorded last week's podcast. Of uh, naturally, uh, that that's how it works. So we, we gave a little bit of a, uh, an insight into it, and none of us were surprised by the move. If you listen to our podcast, I would have been last surprised week. had they not right. And I think so, too, because $13.4 million is a very reasonable number. If you were signing Pay to a long-term deal, I mean, I mean that's at, at but least— But this gives you one more year to decide right. if that's something you want to do. Right. And, and it, like, it gives you one more year with Samson Ebukam here, who had a career year last year. It gives you a year with Layatu Latu to see what he can do. It gives you another year with Dio Odangbo, who's entering the last year of his contract He might as be well, the one the that is most up in the air. Right. Very much so, since he is, like I said, entering the last year of his contract. And I don't know what Ebukam's contract is. It was is. a three-year deal, so he's got okay, two more so years. But, two I, more. but I think you can sort of get out of it. It's sort of like a two-year deal. Okay. Uh, but and, and you're always – you just always – you have to be drafting somewhat with an eye in the future. Not so much in round one, I don't think, but the two offensive linemen they drafted. Yeah. Those might be next year, you know, contributions. But you have to – you can never have enough good pass rushers. And, again – They've not done that great overall with rushers. Mm-hmm. They Quiddy's Quiddy's been the tease, if that's the right word, to where maybe this is he's he's just coming into his own. Because remember Ballard said how with past some pass rushers it takes him mm-hmm. three or four years, and we've seen steady steady uh, progress. And you know what happens if Quiddy gives you twelve, thirteen sacks? Right. Then then what do you do? Mm-hmm. So, but it it, it it bought it bought him another year, and again, like you said, thirteen point four million. It's 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 three three place. It's three Matt Gays, right? So, but so yeah, <laughs> it was it was it, they had the cap space, and it, to me, it was not a no brainer, but it was one that it made much much more sense to retain him than to to say no. This is we're not going to pick up the option, Matt. I think that's going to become our new standard unit of measure when we're uh, writing stories. <laughs> How many for Matt the Gays is this contract <laughs> worth? <laughs> exactly. So. I, I, I think that that, that would go. I, go I had a long to work way. it in my head. Yeah, with, with my Beach Grove uh, education, whether <laughs> you did it was very well. Right, th- thank you very much. Uh-huh. I smelled the, the the wood burning from over here. Pride, yeah. of the, pride of the hive. That's right. All right, so so I, I think the 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 rotation on the defensive line is going to be intriguing because at, at this at this point you have so many guys there. Like I, I kind of mentioned last week, with uh, looking at my I put together a depth chart for the first time just after the draft, uh, just to see kind of where we stand here and there. Start. How many rookies start? None. I, I don't know if any start because like only lot, one would. And that would be lot, lot two. two, right? Uh, like Adonai Mitchell. If anything, like he's. If you start in three wide receiver sets, if he starts over Alec Pierce, I think I would be surprised from day one. That would be a great sign for for Mitchell, first of all. No question, and a bad and, sign for and, and a very Alec bad Pierce. sign for Pierce. Yeah, this this for Pierce could go two ways. Like it, this could could light a fire under him, and we could see the Alec Pierce that the Colts hope, the one that Lewis Riddick, ESPN analyst, said that was going to be the the offensive rookie of the year two years ago uh, in the preseason. That's what that's what he, his his estimation was, and and Lewis is a pretty good evaluator of talent. I'll, I'll give that to him. Um, but but it did not work with with Alec Pierce this time. I'm not saying that uh, like and he's not perfect. Nobody's perfect, and and that that uh, matchup didn't work. But anyway, um, kind of circling back to the defensive line, there's just so many guys there. So if Latu starts, fine. But um, if like the the actual task of being the starter, I don't think is quite as relevant uh, for. Uh, for, for him or for a guy like Mitchell, because I think both of them are going to get, I don't know, probably 20 to 30 percent of snaps to, to start things out and uh, maybe 20 percent for Mitchell, if you're lucky, uh, based on uh, just being a little bit further down, I think, in the rotation. So anyway. I, I was looking real quick about 2002 with Dwight Freeney. He started week eight at Philly and then he just took off. I mean, right. he, remember, he had like three force fumbles in a sack. Yep. That, less than fun, but he didn't start. He didn't start for seven games, and they had uh, 
Chad Bratsky, who was on the downside mm-hmm. of a really, really good mm-hmm. career. Solid career. They had Raheem Brock, who was, one, to me, one of the more underappreciated players. Dude had some athleticism, man. So, so, so they were in a position, like these guys are, is to not throw him out there. So uh, we've talked. I, you know, He's going he's gonna to be a strong rotational player. 40% of the snaps, I don't That'd know. That'd be great if he gets that. So. And as much as you play nickel, he'll he'll be one of the four guys. I don't mm-hmm. care. You can figure out it's going to be him and Quiddy and Buck and Dio. I mm-hmm. don't know. That's that's a pretty good group. Yeah, I, I think that that's a scary group to to face against if you're if you're an opposing team, if you're an opposing quarterback. So, I mean, it all depends on on if Latu translates, uh, obviously. But but at this point, I, I think that as long as he stays healthy, as long as he's out there, I, I, there's no reason right now. There's no reason right now. Not to think that he does, just especially in a role where you can just say, hey, go after the quarterback, you know? Sick him. Yeah, sick him. Yeah. Just like with Alec Pierce early on, it was, you know, you go deep. Yeah, go. And we'll work on the, the, the route tree later. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't want to say lot two is a luxury. He's not. You don't have the 15th pick being a luxury. But, but you're in a spot where you don't have to log him with, with major menace to see. So you're in a good – he's in a really good spot to, to do good things. It, there was a time where we thought we would be talking about the Colts' schedule this week, but the NFL has <laughs> pushed it back just uh, one week. Gives us a little bit more time to talk about Caitlin Clark's home debut here in Indianapolis when we're on the air, which I will be heading out to later today live at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. But uh, nevertheless, she's such a phenomenon. She is. It's she's great. Unbelievable. She's incredible, um, and a ton of fun to watch. And looking forward to this summer with some some significant professional sports going on in in, in Indianapolis, which is kind of unlike what it has been. They need to get most back of my to being relevant, here. like yeah. when Tamika was mm-hmm. doing her yep. stuff, and was it Katie Douglas? Yep, yep. Those Tamika, were Katie those Douglas. were those were really fun teams to watch, and they yep. need to get back there. When, and when you get again, th- this is sort of similar to where when the Colts had Manning and Edger in back to back years, and you know they got Boston and Clark, mm-hmm. and that you can do great things. Yep, with you know a core number of players on your team and hope that happens here no doubt so the nfl will release its schedule now next week uh, scheduled for may 15th maybe we think that's the report anyway it would be the latest schedule release in uh 34 years since 1990 if indeed that is the day when it comes out and uh jim ursay of course uh shared uh his uh his uh insight in the matter just tweeting out that uh, it'll be out soon it was uh was kind of his uh his message to the fans there saying don't worry it's coming and uh the colts uh will learn their schedule with the rest of us well they probably know it uh because all you these need teams, to know when you're going to jacksonville it, i do i do mm-hmm. i need i need to book book my flights now uh get get there and book my hotel they, they need to know i'm coming for crying out loud we're, we're gonna send you by car this year dave oh thank you yeah that is that that'd be my way of trip. dallas you know, yeah make right? that scenic tour yeah i just have to make sure to bring my uh to bring my my water purifier for the world's worst tap water in jacksonville florida and, and that's not a scientific study by any stretch but i've done plenty of plenty of trips here there and everywhere and and i've yet to find tap water that is worse disgusting than jacksonville florida for for whatever is, reason is it well water i don't know type? man I, mean, like, I, I, I drank I, well water and it's not good i do not know what it is is but it like green is there a green no it's not green it, 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 it doesn't it, look bad or anything it just tastes terrible oh. so it, it just it tastes awful so and i've like i grew up just drinking tap water i never had like yeah, the pure, pure filter or anything like that like not nothing out of the fridge my my family wasn't that fancy to have a water thing in the fridge when i was growing up in Pay the early three dollars something they, they pour water into yeah exactly like o- open the sink <laughs> tap water there you go Oh, there it is for crying out loud that that's anyway back to the Colts schedule release uh CBS Sports ranks the Colts as the 21st uh most difficult strength of schedule so somewhere near the middle but slightly toward the back rank there it's a three-way tie with the uh, Titans and Eagles and that of course goes into what teams did last year with uh and what, with their what, schedule. what division you're in mm-hmm. what divisions you're paired with right and so the uh, the let's see that yeah it's based on winning percentages like I said uh, so and and who knows what what teams are going to be so it doesn't from, from one year to free the next agency and, and exactly and draft and, right and all but that it's stuff. it's at least something it's at least something to to kind of put put a target uh, out there and they're uh, the hardest schedule for this year goes to the Cleveland Browns. Um, the easiest schedule goes to the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons. Divisions. Look at the divisions. Exactly. Around. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the Browns have to play the Bengals twice. They have mm-hmm. to play the Steelers yep. twice. Baltimore. They have to play Baltimore. the Baltimore Ravens twice. So so that immediately shoots it up. And then the Saints and Falcons, they, of course, have to play each other. And then the Panthers and the Buccaneers. So uh, look at that right there. Yeah. And one thing what people <clears> need to realize when you hear the, 
you're playing the last place schedule, that's only two games that it matters. It used to be a lot more than that, but it's, right. it's just two games. Right. So the last place schedule is you play teams from another division. Um, they, they finish last in their they division. They finish last in their division. Right. So typically in the AFC South, everybody – We'll play the uh, AFC, is it West this year or is it? No, it's the East uh, this year. Everybody plays the AFC East. And then the Colts are playing the last place team from the AFC South, which is the Denver Broncos. Um, so third, that, third place. They have the third place. Third place. Uh, yes, excuse me, the third place. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, but anyway, they're, they're home games. You got the Jaguars, the, the Titans, and the Texans, of course. And then the Bills, so Josh Allen coming in. Bears, Caleb Williams coming in. Lions, uh, Jared Goff coming in. Dolphins to a tongue of Iloa, and Steelers. Russell Wilson, maybe, or, or Justin, or Fields. Justin Fields. Who Probably knows? Probably depends on which week they end exactly. Up them. Yeah, one of the two of those. Their away games: Jacksonville, uh, Tennessee, and Houston within the division. And then, like I mentioned, the Broncos uh, with Bo Nix. There's another rookie. The Packers with Jordan Love. Vikings with. We'll see. Let's throw a dart. Yeah, pro- pro- <laughs> Patriots with um, Drake May. Yeah, with Drake May, perhaps, and uh, the Giants with Daniel Jones. Maybe. Maybe, and the Jets with Aaron Rodgers, Maybe. assuming he sa- he stays healthy <laughs> there. So uh, well, you so. just don't know. You just, I mean, exactly. Aaron Rodgers four snaps in whatever it was last yeah, year he yeah. blows out his Achilles you were looking at this before the season if the, if this was scheduled like oh well the Colts are going to play you know Aaron Rodgers at some point this mm-hmm. year but then after what happened last season you just don't know right? but, but what's amazing though is is the interest that the league has drummed up over the schedule release oh, is yeah. incredible yep how all the teams now have done their videos where they have the you know the coming out video it, it's really um, i just think what the, the, one of the biggest selling points in the nfl is how they sell itself mm-hmm. you know they, they make you know they make regular events you know the combines more than that but but things like it to where you, you make them things the draft if they could make it a five-day draft they would because people watch it yep i would <laughs> i know yeah exactly I, i'd tune in to, to see what's going on yeah you know, all the they're doing is giving you some dates yeah <laughs> I mean, when it comes you, down you, to you it, know, that's all they're doing. You know who, and you know where, yeah. and you just don't know when. They're right. Giving you a date and time, and, and I guess the interesting in aspect to me is will be how many primetime games does your team get? True. Because yeah. we don't Did know they that. Get, was it none last year? Was it one? It was one. Uh, the, technically, I, I, they had the, the European game, and I think that was kind of their national game. They had one 4 o'clock window game. Yep. And then um, – that was pre-scheduled before they did right. some shifting right. late in the year. And then, of course, they changed the kickoff date for the Steelers game, and then they kind of featured up that uh, the, the Colts and Texans second game. Right, the last one uh, to, yeah, to but, put but, that. But they didn't have any Thursday night game. No, they didn't have they did any not. Monday night game. They didn't have any Sunday night game. I was a fan of not having any Thursday night hey, games, I, and so I, were they. I, selfishly, for the, for the most part, 90% of their games were at 1 o'clock mm-hmm. on Sunday. Which tells you what kind of year you had the year before. Exactly. exactly. And, and that was fine. And the Texans were kind of in the same boat as right. the Colts. They had that early, those early window games as well, and I love the one o'clock games, man. I like I love them just from from a from a my workload standpoint because you have you can get it done, and then then you're 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 not slamming to get it done right. if you're on the four o'clock for for the late shows on Sunday night. If it's not Thursday night, to just kind of throw a monkey wrench into into everybody's week and like things are all all, all funky there. But but anyway, the the one o'clock games are, are certainly my favorite. We'll see, but I think they're probably going to get a, the at least the opportunity for a couple more late ones. I, I bet the Colts I, I Texans have to be. They, I think they have like something. Somewhere. One of those games has got to be a prime right. time. Exactly. And, and a lot of it's quarterback driven. Mm-hmm. And we don't know a lot about Richardson, but you, you, that, that's where you, you bank on it being something. I go back to my years at the Star and in, in the 2000s with, with Peyton. That, that's back when you, you had deadlines. I mean, deadlines. You know, 12 o'clock deadline or whatever. And God, they had six or seven, five or six primetime games. And, you know, yep. eight, 830. Yep. And it was brutal it's just brutal because you know now nowadays with with digital your deadlines whenever you can get it in you know right. sooner sooner is better right but there were times if you don't get your your story done by 12 12 15 it's not in the paper right and i go back to the tampa game the overtime game it got over at gosh quarter of one because it, it was deep in overtime yeah and we've got tom reitman god love him if our stories don't get in in five minutes guys it's not in the paper that's a deadline yeah. Now, now that days there's like deadlines with quotes. No, back then it was deadlines. Right. And you, know, uh, you, you, you don't you don't do your eleven o'clock 
p.m. newscast at 11.35. No, you don't push it back for the Colts' sake. No. no or for anything. If, no. if, if you're not ready at 11 o'clock, right. that's on you. That's when it goes. That, 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 that's it. Um, so there, there should be some intriguing home games. I, I think there's some like there, there's some good teams coming in. The Lions, obviously, are, are one of them. The Bears with Caleb Williams, you don't know what they're going to be. The Bills have Josh Allen. The Texans, of course. Um, all, the, all those games are great. Year. Like ev- ev- like all these games seem like they're they're decent games. Like there there's not a not a real big stinker in all, any of them. The Broncos when they're on the road is I mean um, like, who knows what Bo Nix is going to be? But out out of all these teams, like the Patriots and the Broncos are probably the two, and you throw in the Giants there, the teams that are probably the 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 more, most likely ones you would think are. Uh, are are gettable. gettable. Yeah, Get that's right. I think that's the best best term for it. So, I mean, you these you say that they're twenty first in, in the schedule, but there's certainly not not a whole slew of cupcakes in here. Not not that you expect that with an NFL schedule, but uh, there, there's going to be there's going to be I think a, a really good home slate, assuming quarterbacks stay healthy for the Colts this year. So, if you're out there as a as a Colts season ticket holder, I think you're you're pretty happy with with the the group of teams you have coming in. I think the least attractive home game is Tennessee. Probably. I mean, it's a division game, but you don't know you don't know what they're going to be. Yep. You know, I they're, agree. They're, they're, to me, their quarterback situation is maybe more questionable than the Colts, but only slightly. So, I like the schedule. I and, and we'll see how it plays out and where they get a chance to open at home again would would, would be nice. But uh, we'll see. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let, let, let's get to a, a little bit about the uh, those AFC. Uh, South rivalries here because it was a topic of conversation this week for one Zaire Franklin, Syracuse University. He loves finest. to talk, and he's a good talker. He is. He's a great talker. Um, it's great, great education for him. Uh, he had some uh, some choice things to say on the uh, on Chris Long's podcast. It's called Green Light with Chris Long, and um, talked about if they have any beef right now with the Titans. Um, that was kind of a topic that was. was broached to him and uh, Franklin says that his sights are on CJ Stroud and the Texans of course the Colts have not won their division since 2014 which was the infamous deflate gate season way back when and uh, according to chap you have something to say AFC championship game season mm-hmm. yes yeah. exactly yeah. you still have the AFC finalist banner there hanging in uh, in Lucas yeah, Oil Stadium not a, not a great idea that yeah some people do not think is the best look and then a, that's a great sports meme exactly. for that's, everyone for many many years yes, now all I'm going to say about it I'll, I'll leave it at that but uh, according to uh, Franklin he was uh, hanging out right along Super Bowl Radio Row and CJ Stroud was kind of beside him as they were you know, doing interviews down the line there and uh, Franklin says that he heard Stroud boasting on Radio Road about how he had cooked the Colts in both of his games. So um, let, let's let's get some facts here. First of all, C.J. Stroud in his two games against the Colts threw for 648 yards, four touchdowns, and no interceptions. That's pretty good, like pretty good numbers in those two games. So I understand C.J.'s perspective that in two games he had some pretty good numbers against the Colts. And he's also sacked eight times, including six times in the <clears throat> loss that they had uh, to the Colts early on in the season last year. And uh, Franklin uh, said that he pulled Stroud aside and reminded him, of course, of that, the result of that first game and specifically reminded him of uh, the score being pretty lopsided when Anthony Richardson was in the game. It was 20-7 at one point. And the Colts were cooking them. Yes, at that point. And uh, CJ made up uh, a lot of those stats in garbage time late in the game when the... the uh, Especially, the, the, yes, the first game he did. Yes, yep. in the, in the first, first game. game. Not the, the, the second game. Different story. Yes, very different, different story, story. Different team, yep. different everything. Yep, I'm not, not going to dispute that. But yeah, that was 28-7 at one point. It was, uh, it was 31-10 at one point before Houston had a pair of fourth quarter scores and finished off at, uh, at 31-20 to there. But uh, Zaire said, I was like, if that's what you consider a cooking with the loss, I mean, congratulations. Then I have to remind him as well that he's never beaten Anthony, of course. So so let's stoke the fires here of the Colts and Texans rivalry. Um, I, I'm sure the Titans will have something to say about it. And I, I don't know what to think about the Jaguars. Uh, I don't either. Exactly. So and that's you, on them. That, that's their fault. Yeah, exactly. I, I completely agree. But but right now you can certainly start to, to build some kind of a – uh, a rivalry between the Colts and the Texans because those are the two teams that played the last week of last season for the division. And here we are again. The Colts uh, have all 22 starters back. The Texans have C.J. Stroud back. And the Texans made some moves this offseason to, to try to get uh, better, uh, one step better. 
And so, so I think that's right now. It appears, chap, that that's the premier rivalry in the AFC South to me. Yeah, it's always about you know scoreboard. Well, since 2017, when Ballard took over, the Colts were 50, 54, 60, and one. Seven years. Yep. Against the AFC South, they're 20, 21, and one. I mean, and and this isn't you know the NFC East where you got some stud teams. Six and eight against the Titans. Nine four and one against Houston and five and nine against Jacksonville with almost all those losses down in Florida. Yep, I've seen them. <laughs> you can attest. So it, it's I, I again I don't know what to make of Tennessee. I really I, I think they're a year or two away. I'm not sold on Levis. Jacksonville again they they were right there to seize control of the division last year and going forward and they didn't See, do it. They had a chance at one point to be the best team. In the conference, like that's what I'm saying. yes, yes, they you were know, in the AFC. If, if they weren't first, they were like second by a half a game or whatever, mm-hmm. and then they went on their tailspin. I, I just, if you look at it, I again, I just can't discount Jacksonville. Or they, they they try to make you not like them or expect much, but the, you look at the way the teams are built, and and it's Houston and it's the Colts. It just is, uh, and I really like the way Houston is built. I, they're young. They've got difference makers at the prime positions. Uh, yet as much buzz, and we've talked about this, as much buzz as there is going into the season, I bet Houston's top five in certainly conference odds, maybe Super Bowl odds. I mean, they'll be – You'd have to when you look on paper right. at what they've done. And God bless Zaire Franklin for giving us something to talk about here and also for reminding us that they have won the offseason Super Bowl, the yes. Houston Texans But, but team. I keep going mm-hmm. back that, that with all the flaws that the Colts had last year, mm-hmm. it, it came down to two or three plays in the fourth quarter in the last two minutes. So how much of a dominance – you know? now if, if the Colts had won that game, would there be that kind of buzz around them? Probably not. So yeah, but I just think the way these teams are structured, I don't think there's any question that C.J. Stroud is the guy. I, I think he's he he showed enough over an extended period that he they, they were right. Mm-hmm. Yep, and, and they're going for it. Right, yep. right, and, and and I think on the other hand with, with Richardson, you think you know, but do you really know? So you know, I'd I'd rather think I know uh, rather than be like a Bryce Young where, gosh, what, what have we got? And, and are, are, is it is it a total reboot on his rookie season or whatever? So, yeah, and again, the Colts are, and we'll get into it, they have decided to run it back. I, 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 I tried to look, and I really couldn't find an easy way of doing it, is when's the last time this team brought their entire starting 22 back? I, I, I'd say never. I, there, there may have been a time. Right. But you always lose somebody. Who they they lost? Gardner Minshew and somebody else signed some Zach Moss, Isaiah McKenzie. Okay, that that's it, that's it. And Zach, I, I, I don't want to diminish Zach's Zach probably Moss. Probably a pretty impactful, could be an right. impactful player. But to bring back all twenty-two guys from a team that was nine and eight and didn't get the job done, and again as we've talked, they they are putting so much on being right with Richardson and him. Lifting everyone up and JT, I I, I always have. To, mm-hmm. I just I think we're, it's wrong to say to not include JT and and how off last year was with the 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 injury and the contract and and then he had the injury late. So I I, I like what the Colts have got. I I need to see it, but I really like what he what Houston's done. Yep. And uh, and for the record, uh, Zaire said that he likes C.J. Stroud. So this, uh, like the, the beef that they have, there, there's a little beef because uh, it's Zaire, pretty good natured. Exactly. You know. It's not. It's not a. It's not a. We. I hate this guy for for saying this. It it's was not a, like hey, was, we got to correct you here for a second. Who was it during the seasons several years ago with the fights? It was Eric Walden and Delani Woods. Jelani Woods. Jelani yes, Woods. Yes, yes. I mean, they. Yeah. They got in it. They did. Good. They were they were not fans and, of each other. And this other is at all. like you said, this was at a time at the Super Bowl where it's it's sort of playful. Yes. But whenever it's playful, there's always an underlying There's a hint of truth. Yes, there's yeah. a little bit of edge yes. still yes. there. Right. Yes. Especially with Zaire. We, yes. we love him, but yes. It, it, it reminds me remember when Reggie announced the Colts second or third round picks in Nashville. Mm-hmm. And boy, he let them have it. He did. Because he had scoreboard. Exactly. Reggie so did. For when, sure. when you got scoreboard, you can talk, but again, to to say that Stroud was cooking. Yes, he was, but they they, they were still one on one. Yeah, and he, and he hasn't, you know, and he hasn't been 
beaten AR yet. No, no, he is not, to be fair. So we're uh, eagerly awaiting that that date. Uh, and the schedule release, which we'll They're find gonna out. Open, they, they will open up with a division team, I imagine. They, they usually do, right. yes. So they usually open with a division team. I will bet they will close with a division team again, whether it's Jacksonville or Houston, one of those two, or the Titans. Probably not the and Titans. That one year, didn't they open and close with Houston? They did. That and, was and they were, it that was, was it, Matt Ryan it, it year. Was, that was two years ago. Right. And they were oh because they tied oh one and they were one, oh and one. It's really hard to do. Yes, it's very hard. Yes, to do. I still remember <laughs> against I, the worst team in the league. Exactly. And then they were. And then well, we we can talk about the last week of that season, which allowed them to to draft Anthony Richardson, of course. Um, but but yeah, that was those those were two what, what, really intriguing, really close four, games. Fourth and what was it? Fourth and 20? it was twenty something, man. Just to, to convert that and then score and then get two the two-point point conversion. conversion. Yeah, exactly, for the win. Lovey Smith on his way out. Deuces. But, hey, he gave him the C.J. Stroud. So it's the best thing to happen to Houston is, is Lovey Smith uh, getting that win and, and losing the number one pick. Yeah, if, they'd, if they'd lost that game, they'd have the number one pick. Do you think that they would have picked Stroud? That's a great they, question. That's going to be one of the great hypotheticals uh-huh. ever. That is it, a great question. Would they have gone question. Bryce Young, who was kind of the consensus, kind mm-hmm. of number one guy, mm-hmm. or would they have gotten their guy Stroud? I also wonder if Bryce Young would have been better in Houston than in the dumpster fire that well, was Carolina. Well, he got and I, put in a terrible situation Exactly, and, and I don't I don't want to put put all that on Frank Reich because I still have, have more respect from, for Frank Reich. I get the impression the Frank average, wasn't on board with the pick. It sure sounds like it, yeah, from from what from what I've heard, uh, that, that Frank was more— it, uh, it, It's okay when the owner makes the pick and it's Peyton Manning or Andrew Luck. Yes. As opposed to when it's Bryce Young and you, you've got your owner man, uh, mandating. Uh, that's a word Mandate. I always like to come back to. It's a good one, yes. So, but it's, it's never, it, it's great to have input from the owner, but you better have your personnel guys making the pick, unless it's so obvious as it was with the two franchise savers that the Colts had. Mm-hmm. So, well, it was obvious to most people, uh, not, not to everybody, you know, but so, um, so yeah. Uh, so you, you did have your Ryan Leaf guys, and yeah, you had yeah. your RG3 guys as well in those drafts. Yeah, I, I, I come back to where would this team be if it was Ryan Leaf and Ricky Williams in the first mm-hmm. two picks? Those are yep. you know, L.A. Yeah. is a good place yeah, to think be, about. This team might be in L.A. Yeah, good point. All right, so the Colts have entered phase two of their offseason workouts as uh, coordinators and players have begun to talk to, to us in the media, so we're getting just a little bit of insight into what's going down. Well, we've heard from Jim Bob Cood, we've heard from Gus Bradley, we've heard from Brian Mason, all three of those uh, those guys and then from players so far, we heard from Quentin Nelson, EJ Speed, Josh Downs, Kenny Moore, and Ashton Doolin as well. Dave's breakout player of, uh, of 2021 or whatever How'd it was a couple years ago. It didn't go well. So I still like Ashton. He's my guy. I but, like him. I tell mm-hmm. you, he, he's that, that, that group, of, that small group where they were, he, he, got a, he got his special teams contract last mm-hmm. year. It was two years. Yep. Nine million. Yeah, that's pretty doggone good that's for great a special, for special teams, teams contract. Yeah, and then he he had the I believe it was an ACL. Yep, non-contact. I believe. I went back yes. and looked, and yeah. in, he said in, it was non-contact in training camp. Said he made a cut and heard a pop. Yep, yep. And, and so it's he, he's he's one of those guys that you're you're bringing back that that did that did nothing last year mm-hmm. uh, because of the injury, and and it's all of a sudden it's a very very crowded receiver room. Mm-hmm. But what's his value on special teams? We yep. know it's immense. Yep. So yep. they're going to have some really interesting numbers. Yeah. Uh, decisions on cut day and during the season. I, I know that that Bubba Ventrone, when he was here on the Colts special teams coordinator, talked about like he got a few picks for the roster for the fifty three man. You know, at, at the at the end of the roster, he said, "Hey, these are my guys. I got boom, boom, boom." Um, and, and for the Colts, if you're looking at a couple special teams picks for the bottom of the roster, I mean, Grant Stewart at linebacker is going to be one of them. And I think Ashton Doolin might be your second pick right there for, for special teams. And after that, I'm not sure who it's going to be. Maybe Trevor Denbo. Um, he's Maybe. been there the past couple of years. But you can, only, you can only carry so many because exactly. you're, you're going like to have. Maybe he only gets three. Like that could, those could be the three. Well, that he gets. In, in, in Ashton is, he's a receiver. Let's keep in mind. He's, he's a position player. Yes. And you're going to have Anthony, uh. Or a, a Don, uh, a AD Mitchell. Adonai, yes. Adonai yeah, Mitchell. He. So all of a sudden, there's like six receivers, and two six. of them are special teams yeah, guys. You've got yeah. Gould in there, too, as a special yeah. teams yeah. Right. Good so it, it'll be very interesting. Uh, I will I will be calling him AD. AD. Because I'll I, I mess yeah, it I, up. I've butchered the pronunciation. What, what is it again? Adonai. Adonai. AD. I think I got it down now, but man, nah, the first nah, couple I'll weeks. I'll butcher it. Yes. So, but that, that's again special teams, and, and it, it, the, the value is increases now with the new kickoff rules, which we we, we tried to ask Brian Mason about it, and 
he still, at, at, this was last week, had not gotten the final, this is how you're going to do it. So it, it'll be a thing. Special teams is always the last thing to come together. Mm-hmm. But this is. is this is one where everybody's in the same boat. Mm-hmm. And we'll see how they kind of do the roster. Again, I already say the practice squad, the way they've done it is a big extension of the, of the active roster. Mm-hmm. But there are still decisions to be made on who you keep on the 53. Yeah, and I think it's wise to, to keep – keep the floor high in there like because right. this this might make sense i hope it makes sense because because i'm saying it but like I, i'd rather have good special teams players on my roster week one so that the floor like i said is is kind of manageable for this for this new thing you, you don't want crazy like great and bad things you you don't want the 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 variability of that you you want to have some kind of consistency there in that group and i think guys like Ashton Duell and Trevor Denbo, Grant Stewart, although they, they're not your big names, they're not the guys that, that you line up for at, at a Colts uh, autograph event. Like They could be really important, especially at the start of the season, to kind of making sure that there is some kind of stability on this special teams group. Because even though it's going to be a completely new kickoff scenario, it's also going to have some aspects of special teams play from the past in it. And those guys are really freaking good special teams players, all of them. So Look, look through the years with, 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 you know, George Odom. Yeah. Uh, ex, ex, elite. Chris uh, Ballard kind of mentioned him the right. other day. And, about and Zach teams, Pascal and this. people yep. like that. So mm-hmm. it, it's, it's – we, we just shouldn't – you know, we, we can't just dismiss these guys because – and again, losing Ashton Newton last year, it, it hurt. And there, were, there are times, that, not so much last year, but it hurts when, when one, a person like him or a Pascal gets hurt because he's they, they've been like your fourth receiver, which you don't really want it to be. But So it, it'll be very interesting to see. And generally it's it's the younger guys. And some of the times the problem you run into is when you, you have your special teams guys set, injuries hit at a position, cornerback, safety, or receiver, and all of a sudden, one of your special teams' core guys has to play more defensive or offensive moments, and maybe he plays less on special teams. So you better have people who can step in and do it because special teams can just cook you if, yep. if you give it to the plays. And I think one, one thing about the, the way roster mechanics work now is for, for the guys on your practice squad, you can put guys there and, and hope that and, and keep them – Right. Well versed in special teams, and then bump them up the day the day of the game because they're practicing exactly. They're out and then that like that that can be good for you. Uh, it can be questionable for you because it happened last year at the start of the season. The Colts had to put Sterling Weatherford on the on the practice squad. If you remember, the Bears signed him off the practice squad. These Chris, guys are free agents. Yes, Chris Ballard talked about that, saying they really liked Sterling Weatherford, but they just didn't have the roster spot. Yeah, you for can't him. really stash a guy because if another team wants him, they're they can get him. him. I assume it's still a rule, but like. You know, guys are active on Sunday, practice squad guys and all this. Monday, they're free agents. And then I believe Tuesday in the past, you could protect four guys yes, on practice so. squad. I assume that's still the thing. And there were times, which I never understood, when the Colts wouldn't protect guys. I don't know if, they, if, if the other teams thought, well, you're protecting him, you must really like that guy. Yeah. But, boy, if you can protect those guys. But, but in essence, practice squad players are free agents and mm-hmm. they can be gone the next day mm-hmm. uh so that's a little bit of special teams let's talk defense uh because the colts did spend their pot top pick in the draft on defense gus bradley came to the stage and said he was a major fan of layatu latu and if you saw the colts uh, behind the scenes uh video they put together on youtube you could see that he was a big fan of layatu latu uh just with his reaction to the pick um so so eager to see how how he uses him and before he gets his hands on him i think it was like was Gus Brad? I don't think Gus Bradley was in Seattle with Jadavion Clowney, was he? Well, like, was did Clowney go back no. that far? That's yeah, that, I, wanna, that I think so. Yeah, it sounds too far back to me. Like he was mainly known there for the secondary, although they certainly had some good, good guys, uh, decent guys on the defensive line too. But uh, but yeah, I th- I seem to think that was too far back. Uh, he he also talked about Juju Brents saying he'll benefit from a full off season, which is a great point I think because Juju basically did nothing yep. Yep. last off season with his injuries. Yeah, it, it, so so he really. And once he gets back in during the season, they're not practicing. Right. To pre- I mean, they're they're preparing for, for the next team. game. You're they're, not you're not doing. It's not well, We need to get Juju X number of you know looks at this. No, we're we're, right. we're preparing. So Juju, I don't know how many times he actually practiced because he misses all of off season. Yeah. All of training camp, and then you're in game one. Then he missed the first part of the season mm-hmm. with with the injury. So he will benefit. Jalen Jones will benefit. So mm-hmm. it, it's you know it's the old anti. Allen Iverson, practice. Yes, practice means something. Mm-hmm. And, and the opposite of that is that's probably why Jalen Jones was where he was because he was the seventh-round guy. 
but he was healthy, yeah. right. and he, he got the reps and he got the playing time right. because there were opportunities there, and he did a pretty good job of seizing mm-hmm. that for the Colts right. last year. And to his credit, he beat, beat out Darius Rush, too, who mm-hmm. even had a pick six in that first preseason game. And so, so yeah, Jalen Jones uh, did, did very well with the reps that he got because Juju Brents was not in there. So uh, we'll be eager to see what Juju can do with a full offseason for sure. Um, how about a little bit on the off? Uh, no, we had Kenny Moore as well on defense uh, and EJ Speed. So uh, Kenny Moore said he believed uh, he went back to 2023 as kind of a learning experience for the secondary uh says and we'll stick with secondary of course um saying some he thinks some of the young guys will be better seeing growth in guys like juju jalen jones um that's just in the off-season workouts and injuries also hurt the chemistry of the unit that's that's true Mm -hmm. i think so communication that sort of thing exactly like i i look back to that rams game early on last year with with juju and kenny moore just like staring at each other there were two or three times last year when that was the case well i thought you had him no you're supposed to have him while puka nakua strolled into the end zone and, and won the game for them so um but yeah you're right like there's there's it, it's we talk about this with the offensive line chap all the time about having the same five guys out there is important and the Colts had that last year it was it was it was really a, a boon for them and the offensive line performed much better than it had two years ago when people were hurt and they were throwing new guys in there left and right so uh so listen to Kenny and I think it's a great point that if the secondary can stay healthy Dallas and they get Flowers. the offseason yeah exactly you, you, you'd Blows out his Achilles uh, first month of the season whatever it was yep so so you expect better things from from, from the secondary this year than you did the year before and, and, and the pass rush will help having you know having a, a, a maybe a closer you hope with with a lot too but but the the pass rush makes your corners better so as much as you know we all thought maybe they they, they might go corner in round one at 15, maybe adding a, a, a an elite pass rusher, you hope, you know, makes it that much harder to where the quarterback does have to get rid of it a little bit quicker so you don't have to cover it quite so much. Yeah. Um, EJ Speed uh, saying that he is getting scary up front after seeing Layatu Latu's film, uh, saying the best front he's ever played with, and that's no big surprise. He's only played with the Colts, and this seems to be the best defensive front that the Colts have had. Uh since the days of Freeney and Mathis together here. Uh, That's accurate. I don't think it's accurate. I, I think so. I mean, shoot, they just they just set the record last year for sacks in Indianapolis this season. They and bring they, everybody they added back. a fifteenth overall pick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So so there's no reason to say that this is not the best that they've had in a good long time. Um, says that he's not thinking about his contract year, that it'll work itself out. But um, it is a contract year. But it is a contract year for EJ Speed, which will be really interesting, I think. It, like, you, you have to pay some people. You have to not pay some people. And, and Chris Ballard has has drafted linebackers. Like, he's gone from one to another here and there. Like, Zaire but Franklin's he, But he also that, has, has re-upped yes, Shaq. He, he's right. re-upped Zaire twice. Yep. He let Bobby Okereke go is right. kind of what I'm right. saying. He let, uh, no, he let no. Anthony Walker go. Mm-hmm. Two pretty good players. Two really two, good two players. Two really good. Yeah, yeah. I say they really got good, good contracts yes. elsewhere. Yes. Because they are respected across the NFL. So, um, so yeah, a big year for EJ Speed. But if you look at the makeup of the roster, if EJ Speed takes that next step, you resign him. Because you, there's no no one in waiting right. to step in. Look at next year what they've got. EJ Speed, they've got Ryan Kelly. If, there's, if I'm missing someone else noteworthy whose contracts are up, well, Dio. Right, Dio. So they've got four or five guys. You know, this year was that perfect storm of having cap space and a slew of your own guys up, and they re-signed all but, what did you say, three? So they re-signed 11 or 12 guys. Mm-hmm. So I'll be here to see what, what also EJ does after. Like last year, he had a full off season last year to really be the starter too because Shaq wasn't wasn't doing all that much. Right. So that that's that between that year and this year is not too different. So. Um, speed comes into the air once again, being kind of the de facto starter uh, over there, and certainly. And put, he, go ahead, go ahead. And he's got just enough wild man in him. Yeah, on the field, a little, a little too much well, at, at times uh, after the after the play is ended. Hmm. Right, but you, but you can just see the growth in him and in and what he brings, and he's such a different player than Zaire is. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think the sky's the limit for him, and if he if he has a good season, you you. Within reason, yeah. bring him back. Out of Tarleton State, that is that is a job by the scouting department. Credit to uh, the Colts. If you play Colts and Southern. you're good, they will find you. Exactly. They will. And what was he? A fifth round pick? Was he? Was he a fourth round pick? He wasn't. He wasn't any higher. I want to say that. five. I think he uh, was a five too. So, which is one of the reasons you know we, we sort of make fun of it. But when when the Colts traded back to get to get Mitchell, they got two fives. Yep. They're good in the fifth round. They, they are? just are. Mm-hmm. Maybe Jalen Carlisle turns into that that next guy. 
Um, so, so we'll see. Yeah, fifth round pick, so, says Matt, confirming our suspicions. Uh, let's go to, over to the offensive side of the ball. Quentin Nelson um, saying that it's much sharper in OTAs this year than it was last year. And I think that's to be expected being year two under mm-hmm. Shane Steichen. Yep. Like, not, not a brand new head coach this time exactly. and, and all that. So it's, it's not only that the players kind of know what to expect, the coaches know what to expect. That, that's something that trickles down, sharpness. Like I think if the coaches are on it, and they can clearly communicate to the players what they expect. Then the players will be good. The starters, then the backups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If if you get if you get a coaching staff that is working through some kinks, like last year's obviously was, since it was their first one together, more so on the offensive side than the defensive side, there are going to be times where it's not as sharp. This year, you should expect more sharpness from the offensive staff this off season. The more these guys talk, the Ryan Kellys and and Quentin, there was some level of disconnect the previous year with Chris Strasser. There just was. And sometimes it's what guys don't say, but how they say what they say, where more attention to detail, there's more accountability. Something was wrong two years ago. It just was. Yeah. And, and now... And they fired everybody but him, Chris Strasser. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which I, I one of the all-time great mysteries. But it was the same guys, for the most part. It was the same people uh c- coming back last year and they played pretty well mm-hmm. they, they i mean they they got they even got some decent minutes from extended minutes from blake freeland he struggled early like ryman did as a rookie but you know you've got a really good swing tackle coming back with freeland and you drafted two guys who who have starter potential so it's it's again it, it, this is the best defensive line group they've had since the mid-2000s and this might be the potentially best and deepest offensive line they've had in quite a while. Yeah, probably since 2020 when um, – yeah, I, I would say since since 2020 or in that range when Anthony Costanzo was here. I don't think that's too too far-fetched. So, yeah, it's, we'll, I'll, I'll go with that. We'll, we'll count that. Um, saying that his one of his main focuses, Quentin Nelson, this offseason is just taking care of his body, making sure he feels 100% week after week. And I think that's – like that that's – to me, a sign of maturity in the league. You're not just about technique. You're not just about physicality. You're not about getting a little bit stronger, adding a few more pounds. Like you're trying during the off season to to keep your body fresh because you realize, I think, after when at Quinton's point uh, of his career, that being as good week sixteen as you are week three is what can separate a team. A, for making the playoffs and not making the playoffs. I remember talking to Costanzo the last year or two of his career, and he he altered his off season to, to, to not more like more flexibility or whatever. Yep. And he and he saw a difference. And again, at the end of his career, Costanzo was good. Mm-hmm. He was very good. Yep. You know, he, he was as good as you can be and not make the Pro Bowl. Yep. Year after year, man. So it, it's it's all that stuff starts now. Ryan Kelly's in great shape. And we talked to him, I think, the week before. Yes. And, you know, he he's he's not ready to quit. He's all in. All in. He's got that 10-year that look in his eye, and this is a year nine. And I've, I've said, I, I think he, they, if the Colts are in agreement and he plays well, you just see a two-year extension for him in the offseason with maybe he plays one more. I don't know. Right. But, but again, then you've taken steps in the draft mm-hmm. to take care of him or to take care of right guard. Will Fries is another one who's up next year. So you've got people sort of in training to, if it comes to that, to replace these guys. Mm-hmm. On the other side of the ball, um, let's see. No, it's it's still on offense. Excuse me. Um, Josh Downs talking as well about uh, what he wants to do better this offseason, talking about some little things to improve on, and you expect that. Also, like there, there's going to be some more uh, talking to – to Reggie Wayne, D- Josh Downs said, there's going to be some guys who, who know him better, you know? Uh, like, coaches have tape on him better, and they know what Shane Steichen wants to do with Josh Downs better. So so year two for receivers, it can be it can be a boon or bust type type of scenario when, when guys learn everything you can do, and then you get completely shut down, or you get better at what you have done, and you keep growing your game and learning more. And so it... it, it it's that that's the battle for Josh Downs and for most year two players. Now the coaches know or, or other teams know a little bit more of what you do and how teams want to use you. Can you take that next step in your career? And for him, of course, it comes down to developing a rapport with Anthony Richardson as well. Which they had early on. Remember, was it they did. Was it uh during training camp or whatever? Yep. Or mini camp when they were out throwing and it was it was training camp. We're yep. out throwing in a parking lot and running yep. routes. Mm-hmm. Yep. So and again, all that's together is is it's everybody knowing everybody better and then you know who your quarterback is. 
you can build the offense around Richardson now, which maybe they were doing that somewhat last year. But now you know. I went back and looked, and they named Richardson starter in the first or second week of August. Yep. I think they knew. But but you still didn't know to- totally. So now you can you can build the offense around what these receivers do. You know them better. Reggie has another year with him, but you know who your quarterback's going to be, so you can tailor things around him. Yep. So so that's uh, those are the guys we heard from just just the other week. Uh, we'll hear from a couple of rookies, like I said, uh, this coming week. So we'll be able to, to to chat about what the rookies had to say later on. Maybe get a little bit more insight from them. We'll see what numbers they get. Of course, always intriguing. Oh yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, that's, that's the tweet that I'm looking forward so does to. Does Latu get 15, or does that number means nothing? I think to Flacco. No, Flacco was five for like right. I think every every point of and his career. And then he career. was 19 for a couple of years, and then he was 15. Yeah. So so maybe he's maybe they're able to work something out. He won't get 19. 19? No, probably won't mm-hmm. get 19. That's, that's, I think that, that's exactly. pretty well. I think that one's taken. Off limits. Probably won't go with 18 either. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. At some point when you keep retiring these numbers, you're running out of numbers. You are. So who knows? Maybe Flacco can be 25. Can you, you, get, you can, get, Z, can you get zero? If we talk, can you get a zero? At, at quarterback? Maybe. You know, now it doesn't matter, does it? Mm. I don't think it. Yeah, they, they kind of went away from the specific numbers for specific positions. And, and still most of the numbers are I wouldn't because wanna, it's tradition. But I don't think I want to be as... If you were zero, zero, you're setting yourself up to, well, today was really a zero, wasn't he? Right. So yeah. I wouldn't do that. So Chap not a fan of the zero, but but who knows? Like, there's there's plenty of other numbers out there for, for Joe Flacco to to get. So we'll and, see. And we'll find, well, we'll find out tomorrow. Because will be. the rookies that are out there, they yeah. will be wearing numbers. Yeah, they, they have to be. They won't so. be having a big X on their back. No, they, they, they won't. So so there we go. There you have it. You can uh, follow us on Twitter at Colts Blue Zone to, to get For some updates. For breaking news. Exactly. And, that, and, that's where we're in the off season is what number will these guys wear? Exactly. Wearing? Mike Chappell's Twitter is at mchappell51. Of course, you can read all his work online, fox59.com, cbs4indy.com. Uh, Matt is at Statomatty. I'm at Dave G underscore sports. And uh, that's kind of just the uh, the first uh, first dip of our toes into the uh, into the OTA water of this off season. These are not, all not quite OTA yet. It's not quite OTAs. It's still uh, still not. It's what's it called? It's still the off season workout program. Yeah. program. It's just they made it yeah. to phase two. The OTAs are the program. last three weeks. Okay. And they really pardon t- me. They really uh, cut like three practice days off because they're done. They ma- mandatory camp is June fourth through the sixth. They normally have that a week later. They, you can have, I believe, is it 14 days on the field? I think it's 14. And I believe they've got 11. Mm-hmm. I think it's what it is. Mm-hmm. Well, they basically canceled the, the end of last year's mandatory uh, uh, off-season workout anyway. I remember that being a thing uh, a year ago. Reggie probably didn't care. I mean, didn't mind. Oh, he was he was very happy. Uh, the players were very happy with it. Reggie was very happy with it. So, hey, as long as Reggie Wayne's happy with it, uh, we, we we will accept Reggie it Reggie is so fun. Yeah, he's a dude. So, uh, every, every time that he talks, you got to have the microphone in, in that the, scrum. There have been times during the week that I'm done with my work. I really got nothing else I want to do. We talk to Reggie, and you gotta you got to post something because he says something. Mm-hmm. And normally it's insightful. Sometimes it's off the wall. I mean, who is what was the – Strawn, uh, Megastron, yeah, Michael Strawn, which didn't yeah, work, didn't turn it didn't out. Work out but R- Reggie, he he, first he enjoys it, he does. Yeah, we had Fridays with Reggie during his career, and it were it was just golden. But he always gives you insight on these guys, and and so there's always that mix of of Reggie and his knowledge, and there's plenty of both. So I I, I and I think a lot of us are surprised that he has warmed to the job because I, I think. He wasn't really sure because he prefers his temperatures warm around him and and, and, a, and an adult beverage in, yes, his, in his, his hand in his hand, which which is frowned upon at the Colts complex. Yes, mm. but no, I, I think it's a great thing. It's I think it's always hard for a player, an elite player, which Reggie is, to coach, because I think your natural thing is, this is how I did it. Why can't you do it, Larry Bird? I think it's just so hard for these elite guys to do that. But Reggie's doing it. He he relates. He's not so. I remember when they had uh, Tom Rathman, running backs coach, yep. and most of the players didn't really know who he was right. because it was so far removed. Right. Reggie is is still young enough to where these guys know him very much. So, and of course, it, be, being with the Colts, you're going to know who Reggie Wayne is. But but he's got that interaction with that personality, so it's just a great thing to see him growing as a coach. And when you've got a young room, who's who's the oldest receiver now? Doolin, Doolin or Pittman? Probably Doolin. I'm trying Pitt, to think uh, which Pittman's one played of them is four years. Yeah, but so it, but it's a young room, right? 
So you're going to have interaction with these guys, and I think it's he, the, the sky's the limit for what these receivers can do with Reggie's uh, mentoring. Yep. Uh, so one one more year under Reggie, we'll we'll see what we'll see what they can do. Um, we do appreciate you listening. Please download, subscribe to get us delivered to your podcast listening device as soon as it drops week after week, and we'll see you next week on the Colts Blue Zone podcast.